give me your best circles now, rolling your wrist on the page, give us a few circles. If you're standing up with a chart, you just stand arm's length out, rotate the circle, rotate the shoulder, you get an awesome circle. <laughs> And there's an international competition for who can create the most perfect circle and some guy wins it every year. So there's something to aspire to. But if I ever have to start depicting a model or conveying information, I go straight to a circle because it's a great way to keep unity, communication, uh, a process, everyone in together, collaboration. So straight away we can do that. Okay, next thing, let's do some dragging down the page lines. Fast, I want a bit of speed here. Straight down. Nice and feathery at the end. Handcrafted. <laughs> Made in the moment visuals. This is the stuff that's engaging. We need some paper and markers for these to break it down here. Throw them some paper. Throw them a bit of chart or two. Just a pen and um, no pen and pen. So they're called drop lines, where you're literally dropping the pen down the page, straight for borders and margins. And give me some horizon lines, which are level with the horizon. <laughs> we're warming up. <laughs> and then give me some throw lines, which are the diagonals across the page. And now combine the drop line, the horizon line, and the throw line and give me a nice graph with a nice arrow on the end of that throw line. So a drop line, a horizon line, and a diagonal throw line with an arrow showing incredible growth and progress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We have to breathe. Sometimes when we put pen to paper, we go. <laughs> okay, let's run through our alphabet. I'm going to use words. We just better make sure they're worth looking at. Here are some quick tips. Take it slowly when you're writing. Lift your marker off after each letter. Not success, but success. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so go A to Z, capitals, just, you know, match boxing size. <coughs> Pick up the speed, come on. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> <laughs> because we want to be able to capture information swiftly without it looking shitty. <laughs> So once you've gone through the alphabet, go again, see if you can keep the form of those letters. We don't want them all nestling up together, they'll be difficult to read. But sitting next to each other. And who's already put a couple of letters around the wrong way in the alphabet? Great. <laughs> right. I was like, what? <laughs> now do some lowercase. Lift your pen off after every letter. <laughs> Go again, other up a bed, warming up, letters <laughs> worth reading, words worth reading. And numbers, zero to nine, one to ten. So usually when we're capturing information that groups are contributing, let's say a, a planning meeting or a kickoff meeting, it's probably best to write level, fast and clear. So if you want to write those three words down, level, fast, put a few fast cartoony streams, streaks <laughs> off the word fast. You might want to lean the word fast as if it's really moving fast.
Who's got a bullet tip marker in their hand? Who's got a chisel tip marker in their hand? Chisel. Chisel can change your life. <laughs> Have a look at the chisel. High tip, make some lines with the high part of the chisel hitting the page. Nice. <laughs> now make the whole angular part of the nib hit the page, so you're going to get a really fat line. Nice. <laughs> Now here's the quick bit. Change your grip. Alright? Put your hand over the top so the mark is sort of sitting in your hand. And tilt it so you've got the low tip aligned with the page. Thin line. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So the high part of the chisel will give you a line very similar to a boring bullet. The whole side of that chisel, that diagonal part, if you're making sure you're dragging that all the way along, you get a lovely thick line. And if you change your grip so you can get the marker more parallel to the page, and go light on the pressure, you'll get a nice light line. So tools are important. I'm also on a mission to rid the world of bullet tip markers. <laughs> like every whiteboard, every flip charting organisation has. I bet these are bullet tips. No! <laughs> bullet tips. So bullets just give us, that's all we can do, unless we go back over it. So get yourself some good chisel tips, take a trip to Office Works. If you work on whiteboards, Office Works have chisel tip whiteboard markers too. So get some chisel tips. I love chisel. Dynamic. <coughs> You've got such variety. Instead of everything being the same volume off the page, you can now have some things that are a bit quieter, some things that sort of volume five, and then some louder things that really are popping, need to pop out of the page. Okay, let's get into some more words, yeah? change alphabets into actual words. Uh, we've got some circles here. Very, um, say, write one of the words that you often write in your work. Just write one of the words, write, as in print, write, not scribble. So let's say that word is something like agile <coughs> or system. And just notice which part of the chisel were you writing with. Right, so being conscious of that. And now put a nice little thin line box around that. One of those words. <coughs> so what we're doing there is creating a container for text. Instead of words wanting all over a page or over a screen, start to contain them in containers. So designers will tell you about the world being made up of circles, squares and triangles. So those shapes can be awesome containers for words. So tip is write the word first, then the container. <laughs> <laughs> so our word from around the room that you've got on your page? Value. Value. Thank you. Let's go big. Markers I'm using today are German from a company called Neuland. Uh, nice and big. Yeah. So circles are also ovals. So draw some circles, squish them, make them ovals. Quick swip around your word and you're starting to contain text. Makes it worth looking at. What's another word around the room? Health. Health. In a square. And another word? Parking lot. Parking lot. 
say these two words, but we'll let you know. <laughs> I'm still along. I'm still <laughs> <laughs> So words can also, you know, be contained and help people engage and connect and see them and they'll stand out off the page. You can write a number of words in a shape. Yeah, you can. This is, is visual. This is visually engaging. So give me some other shapes. Oh, it's a cloudy day. Let's go to the cloud. Nice. <laughs> Great to indicate what people are thinking. Put heaps of words in there. Chuck post it notes in there. Here's a bit more of a funky looking cloud. Count with me. One, two, one, two, three. 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 Oh, nice. <laughs> so we can borrow a few things from the cartooning world, even if we can't draw. Uh, and cloud shapes are a great way, another great container that's just a little bit more <coughs> interesting than circle, squares, triangles. Speak bubbles. I was going to draw a person saying something, draw the arrow pointing at them, and then join up the shape. Any shape. <coughs> These look great all over a flip chart. So if you're getting input and suggestions from people, instead of letting those suggestions waft up into the air, capture them. Capture them in thought and speech bubbles. And then give the page a nice border with some drop lines and horizon lines, a nice title, and you've got a page worth looking at. And people will remember that these were the things that, said, that were said. They'll also begin to remember more of the detail that was said about that. So it'll, it'll act as a, a visual anchor. So we've got some lines going on, we've got some shapes. And I love to let um, words also tell the story for me. So if I've got a word like focus, then I can actually make it focus. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so write for me now the word open. How might you write the word open so the word does some visual work for you? Uncertainty. Just put a question mark. Yeah. Just put a question mark. A question mark. So you can let the language help you along the way with visual thinking without going, oh, how do I draw a giraffe? We talked about sticking our neck out. Maybe you don't need to. <laughs> Keep them simple. As uh, Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So I like to go with very simple communications, simple icons and symbols, simple words, and uh, simple visual containers to help those uh, messages get across to people. Okay, a couple of other shapes. Uh, the blob is quite nice. Yeah. With some splatters. So a bit more interesting than a square or circle, particularly if a team's gone, oh, we finally get it, aha. Uh -huh. <coughs> then that might even be worth the reverse cloud. Put the scallops the other way. Mm. Looks a bit more Batman. How? <laughs> so great to put an aha uh -huh in there. And then around that I've put some what are called <coughs> emphasis lines. So they can indicate movement or action or energy. So if you were capturing some visuals here in, in comments from a group and there was a lot of fiery stuff going on, then you might want to put some little emphasis lines to go, ooh, 
there was something going on around that topic. There was something happening. There's a lot of energy around that conversation. And Andrew, lovely love heart over there before. So when teams talk about passion, I'll quickly draw a heart and then lines off it or other containers for text around that. Who uses bullet lists of things? Yeah. <laughs> so capturing things in clusters or lists, even more engaging if you use the same sort of bullet, but just move away from boring square. Use a triangle, use a heart, use a circle, use a spiral. <laughs> Dollars. I was working with a group recently, an environmental group, and we did leaves for their bullet points. Mm. And then a lovely group of ladies in the country who were into weaving. So I did a few quick strokes to show a weave. So you can listen to people's language and they will give you hints about what you can draw if you can't draw. But let's start drawing. Okay, give me the other stick figure there, quick, on the count of five. Good stick figure. We want some comparison. Stick figure. Put a face on it. We have a speech bubble coming out of that person's mouth. What did they say? About the new project sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little horizon line at around their hips, in a line in the background, and now it puts them into a context. It looks like they're standing somewhere. So I like drawing a lot of people when I'm working with people. And that's nice, but let's get a bit more elegant with our people, yeah? So they're worth looking at. <laughs> Hmm? We can give him some hair, we will. So first off, I'm going to go with an oval shape. Put in some arms that look a bit more like there's some shoulders. And then a bit of a V down here for a body. And a figure eight thing at the bottom of the feet. And some emphasis lines. Really quick person to draw. And you can create your own style around that. You can begin to find how, oh, here's a quick way I can draw a person that looks a little bit more interesting than a stick figure. Try the proportions. Some might have a really big head, little body, long arms, no neck, big feet. And you'll get your own style. I also like the squiggle person, which is quick to draw. So a circle for the head, and then a squiggle off the mark, <coughs> and then some legs at the bottom, and hand. <laughs> so now this person's got four limbs, they can start doing things. You could have a leader pointing to someone, you could have after the project's wrapped up, you know, people might be... <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the project. <laughs> yeah, that's on delivery day, <laughs> passing out. So I can begin to put people in positions that indicate what's going on in the group or what's going on with the team. And it's a quick and easy to teach others to draw so that they can begin representing the stuff they're working on or they can begin <coughs> using symbols to capture convey and create information as a team. Let's go even a bit more elegant and do the wonderful star person. So it's a head and then star <coughs> limbs. And the head becomes that fifth star, or fifth point rather. And if I begin to close off those bottom points, I can also make these people point to things or hold signs that say things. And if I put a horizon line in, it 
gives a reference or context for where this person is. So this one, I've now made all of a sudden jump up off the ground. Hooray! We have a shadow. We have, could have a shadow. Cool, down here. <laughs> Now, taking people, because the things I draw <coughs> use the most when teams are collaborating, I like to, what's called, zoom in and zoom out. So let's zoom in from that full person, have a look at some facial expressions. <coughs> a couple of quick ways to draw people. <coughs> uh, if you draw yourself a circle for uh, one face and a U shape for another, So I like to zoom in on people when, <coughs> when they start talking about emotional stuff. So if they're frustrated, annoyed, pissed off, elated, whatever emotion comes out, I think, great, I'm going to zoom in and capture this from that person. So a lovely um, series of faces by the name of Wong Baker was created as a pain scale for kids in hospitals. So when they came in with a broken arm or appendicitis or something, they pointed on the scale from 1 to 10 of how, in how much distress they're in. So have a look at Wong Baker faces, and they are a delight because they're so simple. Two big circles for the eyes. Make a touch. And put a little eyeball in the middle. Some eyebrows. A W for the nose, it's like a bum, and then a smile for the face, so the um, grins. So that's sort of at scale number one on the Wong Baker pain scale. Can you imagine what 10 is like? Poor kitties. Um, so 10 looks something like, we've got tears and a big, very unhappy face, and the eye socket starting to drop down. So circular faces are quick and easy to draw. Um, and on one of the projects I was working on, we had a management committee signing things off, and so I created round heads for each of the people on the committee. Little circles, bald guy with the funky glasses, uh, Guy with the Justin Bieber hairdo, uh, lady with the masses of red curls. So it's really easy to capture actual people on your team by putting in some of their characteristics. And then the U-shaped face gives you a little bit more flexibility. So maybe you do go a bit Justin Biebery. <laughs> I love putting eyes really close together. By zooming in, you begin to humanise the people who are involved in the project. So sponsors, stakeholders uh, become actual people you can put names to. So instead of capturing notes like get blah blah, schedule signed off by blah blah blah, I could just draw a picture of someone that represented, you know, Ian, who's the project sponsor, for example, and, and a box that says sign off. And on a visual plan or a visual collaboration day, it's that sort of stuff that people are going, yeah, I remember, I remember this detail, the weight that's able to be held by that visual anchor. They're able to recall all of the details of uh, a visual collaboration. And you can see that they're recalling it because their eyes go up and right. They go, oh yeah, I remember. So they're accessing that part of their brain. Let's zoom out from people, because often we have to represent teams, groups, groups of stakeholders. So you can draw star people and join them together. So <coughs> like that. Great visual, but give it the verbal as well. So say, who is this team? Or is it, you know, a voice of the customer, for example? Mix up your fonts, so mix <coughs> upper and lower case. 
I put a horizon line in there quickly. Now they look like they're somewhere. Quick and easy. So zooming out, a couple of other ways I like to draw crowds or teams or groups is this one. So I'll draw, first of all, circles in a bit of a cluster like this. And now I'll go and put in the parts of the body. So we have the arms. And because some are standing at the back, you won't have to put all the detail in. And the body. And you come up and have a look at this later and you'll see how rough it is. And some of them have got overly big heads, which could be representative of <laughs> <laughs> some of our stakeholders and groups, yeah? And give them some energy. So give them those <coughs> emphasis lines. Then you can put speech bubbles, thought bubbles, squares and shapes and triangles and circles around here about what did these people say or what do we need to focus on when we're thinking about customer and value. And my favourite zoom out group of people at the moment are what I call hoop people. So I'm going to go drawing some of these sorts of shapes and put a bit of a head on each of them. The head might be a bit separate. <laughs> and that's a really quick way to draw people. You can give them arms if you like. So this has all been in black and white. But you can use colour to emphasise. So maybe this is the person we're focusing on. This is the person we're focusing on. <coughs> so we're with another colour just to shade and emphasise. So that saying of use colour a lot, but not a, a lot of colour. So don't vomit rainbows all over everything. <laughs> Let's draw a couple of things before we uh, have a bit more of a play and then we're going to have to wrap up at quarter two, I believe. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, 11.45? Yes. Sad yes. but true. Sad but true. Okay, let's take um, some squares but make the lines a little bit more relaxed. Like that. them in, curving in lines, and then flip your nib, so go with the low <coughs> point, and on this one put some thin lines here in the middle. I use this every day, this symbol, to capture or represent a document, plan, strategy, blog, whatever it is. So I've got the visual, now put the verbal in give the name of what it is. If it's the strategic plan, then write that. If it's Sean uh, Anecdotes blog, <coughs> write that. <coughs> and the arrow. <coughs> so underused in hand-drawn things. <coughs> favourite arrows, that sort of changing arrow, to show transition or shift or movement, you know, what's happening in here, transformation and change. Let's do a couple, um, a couple of seagulls flying in formation, thank you, like this. and then join them up with straight lines. Put some thin lines in there. And depending what I label it, what is it? 
Bible. Book, Bible, magazine, magazine brochure, community strategy, tombstone. tombstone. <laughs> 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 yeah. Two seagulls with a couple of straight lines. So whatever it is. Whatever it is. So today we'll make it the last um, conference <laughs> program. What else did I want to show you? Oh, some squares for money. Good. Blowing in the wind type money. Flags. So your task after today is have a look at stuff. You'll see it is made up of squares, circles and triangles. And all of it is able to be captured simply, visually. Listen to what people say and they will give you the hint or the clue to what you could draw. <coughs> this relationship with our clients is going to open up more doors for us. Open up more doors. Squares, I can draw squares. Oh, you don't know it's a door? Then give it the visual and the verbal. That is Door. That, will go, <laughs> that will go straight into your brain so quick, much quicker than even the word door. So the fact that the visual's there helps package and sell that information. And a couple of final ones on circles, since we started there with capturing, conveying and creating, is circles for when you're talking about time and circles for talking about direction. <coughs> so again, when, when groups, people say I was slightly off course, then I'll draw a compass and I might, I might put the, you know, the arrows here and we actually need to correct it here. And then some narratives, some key points about what, what is it that's actually off course. Anything to do with time, cost. Quality could be as simple as a checkbox with a tick or a lovely little prize. You know, you got a prize when you came first, second, third. So in groups mentioned best practice or learning from others or benchmarking. I'll draw that, that sort of ribbon, that prize ribbon. So this is these are the sorts of things I do with groups and teams, helping them work together, visually collaborate, and I'll often spend a little bit of time just getting that confidence back and that uh, just reminding yourself that yes, you can draw these shapes and that they can be really helpful to you. So some actions for you after today. Get yourself some what type markers? Chisels. chisels. Get some chisels because you've got three tips in each one. Um, get some uh, a visual journal. Uh, or if you've got an iPad, I love to use the Brushes app. So I'll be capturing some other things on that today. I've already done um, James uh, James's presentation this morning on systems thinking. So I've tweeted a, a visual scribe of that from the Brushes app on iPad. Uh, I run some full day courses so you can go deeper into graphic facilitation and graphic recording. <coughs> I love using um, templates with teams and groups. So use metaphors and templates for groups to populate and capture their thinking. So if you've got a wall full of post-it notes, look at how else can you make them even more visually appealing, more interesting, more engaging, by using just the, the shapes and symbols and simple images we've covered today. I also have um, an e-news I put out every couple of weeks and I always include a hand-drawn visual that I've done recently so you can click and save it and begin to add to your own visual vocabulary. But most of all, pay it forward. You know, show others, demonstrate it, model it. Uh, you might not want to rock up with your full set of colour markers in terms <laughs> of <laughs> I'm really creative now. I, I'll often just take a black marker and then a highlight marker. <coughs> so I love those, um, those pack sharpie highlight markers. You know, lovely chisel tip, a few bucks at Coles supermarket, a good black marker, and I'm away. So go forth, 
collaborate and engage with people, use visuals, more engaging and um, more creative. Get those parts of their brain fired up that have been lying dormant for too long. Keep it visual, folks. <laughs> And tell Guido I sent you. <laughs> In Germany. Neuland has this drawing book. Cut it. We're not public ones at the moment, but I can. <laughs> so if you have a group. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Let her, let her keep going. Yeah. Um, I tweeted it in the last comp, and yeah, on Twitter, and it'll be on Twitter, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got a, I was trying to uh, get better at doing this stuff, I got Lillian's drawing book. Oh, yes, yes. Which is like, they gave us a to that, help tremendously, and then a bunch of my first movies were making all our agendas look like people's visual agendas. And my friend Ben made it so that each part of the, every part of the meeting was a room. So you traveled through the room. Very good. Great metaphor. Yeah. Now, you're not. So now that you've re-inspired me, that's what I've been doing for the last week. <laughs> I know we've got to move on and move out. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Can we keep in contact? <laughs> <laughs> we need to practice. It's amazing.